What's up everybody, Noah Kiss back here for the video about me talking about the Oscar winners. Now, before we get into the awards, let's talk about the show overall, alright? This was a different year. Not just for us regular folks, but for these celebrities as well. They couldn't go to the parties. We couldn't have the big extravagant red carpet premieres, so they didn't get a whole lot of chances to go out and uh, get dressed up. So this was a little different for them. This was not held in the typical theater either. This was held in a, sm a smaller room. A smaller room. Everybody was tested multiple times or has been vaccinated. They are taking the COVID protocols very, very seriously. So I, I liked that. I was a little worried because I always watch the red carpet. I always like seeing the suits, the dresses, and hearing the people talk about the films ju just in case they don't win. Like, for instance, Carrie Mulligan got to talk about Promising Young Woman. The best film of last year. The best film of last year was Promising Young Woman. Now, I did have a couple problems with this show. And let's get into it. A couple problems I have with the show was the last 10 minutes. The last 10 minutes, you did Best Picture, and then Actress and Actor, which made it kind of feel less important that Nomadland won Best Picture. Now, I'm not, I am not saying that it's, it's a bad film. It is not. It is very important that it won Best Picture. Chloe Zhao and everybody involved with that film deserves it. I think it just kind of took away from the moment. You look forward to Best Picture throughout the whole entire night, and instead, you do it the third to last. And third to last award was Best Picture. Which we, we, are going to, we are going to get into what I thought should have won. If it was Nomadland, keep watching. But actor and actress, I'm a little surprised, but yet I'm not. And I will go into that in just a minute. But I just thought the last 10 minutes were just so rushed and so just so what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It just didn't feel right to have Best Picture seem like the third most important award. Because the way it's supposed to be is you are supposed to get the screenplays. You are supposed to get the supporting actor, actress, director, uh, for, foreign language film, song, visual effects. Normally what they do is they do Best Actress, Best Actor, and then Best Picture, because at that point, you already know what won Best Original Screenplay, which in this case was Promising Young Woman. Now, let's get into the awards, but I thought this show was just very, very just a jumbled mess. Now, the speeches were really, really good. And I'm so glad to have Tyler Perry as a Humanitarian Award winner. A Humanitarian Award recipient because he does a lot for his, his community and for tons of people around the world. So let's get into the awards. First up we have Costume Design. Costume Design, I chose Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And Ma Rainey's Black Bottom picked up the win here. We also had Emma, Mank, Mulan, and Pinocchio. Pinocchio did not get a win here. Emma did not get a win here. And neither did Mulan at any award dur during the night. No surprise there. Best original score went to Soul. No surprise. Defy Bloods, Mank, Minari, and News of the Lord were also nominated. Uh, adapted screenplay. This was a small surprise for me. But yet, not really. They really loved the father. They loved the father. They are like the Baptists. And I thought the Baptists didn't really mean a whole lot to the Oscars this year. 
But let's be 100% honest. If we would have had a different year, and, and, like, for instance, I think that the new Wes Anderson movie, uh, The French Dispatch, is going to be amazing. I think, I think it is going to be amazing. But, would it have been in here? I don't think that you would have seen The White Tiger and Best Adapted Screenplay, but, would you have seen Borat? Would you have seen One Night in Miami? Probably. Would you have seen The Father? Probably. Because a lot of the Academy is older men, is older people. And the older people are going to gravitate towards the father. It's a movie about dementia. It's about a father going through dementia and you are going through it with him. But also, you are also going through it with his family. Now, I've not seen the father, but I know what it's about. And I get the gist of the film. The father was a bit of a surprise for me. And I am completely glad that Florian Zeller and Christopher Hampton got the win here. Because congratulations. You guys deserved it from what clips I've seen from The Father. It's a fantastic screenplay. Fantastic screenplay. I personally went for Nomadland. I did not think that One Night in Miami or The White Tiger even had a shot. I thought Nomadland had a decent shot. I thought Borat could sneak in there. And pick up the win here. But the father. Congratulations to the father. Well deserved people. This one was a bit of a no brainer for me personally. Uh, Promising Young Woman. Won best original screenplay. Best film of last year. We had Emerald Fennell go up there. And give a great speech. I had no idea that she was seven months pregnant. While making this film. Uh, we also had Judas and the Black Messiah. Which surprisingly picked up two awards. I was not expecting it to pick up two. I was expecting it to pick up Best Supporting Actor, but I will get into that in just a minute. Minari, Lee Isaac Chung, Sound of Metal, and of course Aaron Sorkin's The Trial of the Chicago 7. I didn't think Aaron Sorkin had a shot. I thought Judas and Minari had a good shot, but Promising Young Woman was so well-beloved, but I believe it kind of underperformed, and I'm going to get into that in just a bit. If anything happens, I love you. This is one that everyone was predicting. No surprise here. Uh, for best animated short, we also have Burrow, Genius Locky, Opera, and Yes People. Live action short film, we had two distant, two distant Strangers feeling through the letter room, the present, and White Eye. Two Distant Strangers picked up the win. Best documentary feature went to My Octopus Teacher. That's one that everyone was going towards. And it picked up the win. Collective, Crip Camp, The Mole Agent, and Time. A documentary short subject. Colette, a concerto, a concerto is a conversation. Do Not Split, Hunger Ward, and A Love Song for Latasha. I personally went for A Love Song for Latasha, but Colette picked up the win. Congratulations. Uh, international film. This was a no-brainer. It was going to another round. If Minari wasn't in here, then you knew it was going to another round. And I saw some people speculate that the Oscars wanted to make up for the Hunt snub. Because I believe that the same director and the same actor, Mads Mikkelsen, also did The Hunt. Which I now have, and I will be watching. I have heard it's a great... Well, it's, an, it's not an enjoyable film. It's a very hard film to watch, based on what it's about. I think they wanted to make up for it uh, because I, I know a lot of people were a little disappointed. But you also have Better Days, Collective, The Man Who Sold His Skin, and Corvade's Adia. Adia. Uh, best Sound was going to Sound of Metal. No qualms there. Greyhound, Mank, News of the World, and Soul were also nominated. Production Design went to Mank. Mank was going to win this no matter what. We had The Father, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, News of the World, and Tenant. Congratulations to Mank. I personally did not like that film. Film editing, I knew... I, I had a good shot that it was going... A good shot. A good feeling it was going to Sound of Metal, but I wasn't counting anything out here. I was not counting anything out. The Trial of the Chicago 7 is a very fast snap and, and just quick style of editing. Sound of Metal is a different style of editing, but it did win 
uh, at, at, at the Baptist. So that's why I picked it. Uh, Mank won cinematography. Everyone thought it was going to Nomadland. That was a bit of a surprise. That that's that's awesome that it turned out something different because they won two Oscars. They won two Oscars. I would have loved to have seen Judas and the Black Messiah pick up this win here. Potentially News of the World, but I knew that the trial of the Chicago Seven and News of the World didn't have anything special with their cinematography. Judas and the Black Messiah and Nomadland, along with Mank, did. But I personally thought that you could have taken out Mank and put in Malcolm and Marie. Because I thought that that cinematography was much better than Mank. And it it was black, black and white. And it was just so well done with what they had to do. With the limited amount of resources that they had. Because that, that was shot during this whole entire pandemic thing. So they only had one room. Room. One... Uh, one set, one set there, and then that's it. And there are multiple scenes in that film that spoke to me Oscars more than Mank did. I think Mank got a lot of nominations because it's based on the greatest film of all time to a lot of people, and that is Citizen Kane. To me, it is not the greatest film of all time. Now, it's a good film. It is a very good film. I don't think it's the best film of all time, though. I think that either goes to The Wizard of Oz or Gone with the Wind. But, uh, congratulations to Mank for winning two Oscars. That is amazing. I personally went for Nomadland. Uh, best visual effects. No brainer here was going to Tenant. A lot of people thought that, that, that it should go to The Midnight Sky, but Tenant did something different with the visual effects than Love and Monsters, The Midnight Sky, Mulan, and the one and only Ivan did. And it just did the visual effects so well that you really just didn't it, it it was way different than you were thinking it was actually going to be sorry about that guys wish we would get rid of that stupid house phone but but you know what it knows it is makeup and hairstyling went to Ma Rain's Black Bottom we also had Emma, Hillbilly, LG, Mank, and Pinocchio. I don't think there was anything that, that was actually going to beat this anyways. Because Hillbilly, LG got almost no love anywhere. It's, it's not a great film. But in any other year, this film wouldn't have even been nominated anywhere. I don't even think that Glenn Close would have been nominated in, in any other year here. But... Animated feature went to Soul, of course, along with Onward, Over the Moon, A Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, and Wolf Walkers were also nominated, but Soul was winning 100%. Best original song went to Fight for You from Judas and the Black Messiah. That was a very, very nice surprise. We also had Hear My Voice from The Trial of the Chicago 7, Husavik from Eurovision Song Contest, The, Fire, the Story of Fire Saga, EOC or Scene from The Life Ahead, and speak now from One Night in Miami. That that was my personal pick, but I am jumping up and down that Judas and Black Messiah actually got two Oscars. Uh, speaking of their second, <clears> or <throat> second Oscar, went to Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah, actor in a supporting role. This was a no-brainer. We all knew that he was going to win, and if you didn't put your money down on on him, well then, have you been paying attention? Like, really, have you been paying attention? If you were making bets, not on who you thought should win, but based on who you thought would win, not who you think should have won. We also had Sasha Baron Cohen for the uh, for the trial of the Chicago 7, Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami, Paul Racy for Sound of Metal, and Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the Black Messiah. Actress in a supporting role went to Yu Ju Ye Yoon Jung. You, Yun, the grandma from Minari, okay? Maria Bakalova for Borat's subsequent movie film, Glenn Close from Hillbilly Elegy, Olivia Coleman from The Father, and Amanda Seyfried in Mank. We all thought that Amanda Seyfried was going to be the one to win here earlier in the year, earlier in the, the Oscar season race. Then Minari was seen. Then The Father was seen. Mank came out earlier, and I think that that was the problem here. I think Mank would have won a lot more awards if it was out a little more in Oscar season. 
because I think a lot of people forgot about Mank. The the Academy didn't. I couldn't forget about Mank because I knew it was going to be up for Oscars. But congratulations to you, Jung Yun. We also had uh, Anthony Hopkins pick up the win for The Father. I'm going to talk about something that's going to make a, a, a couple of, of, of you mad, I think. And no, I am not mad that he beat Chadwick Boseman. Riz Ahmed was uh, nominated for Sound of Metal, Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Gary Oldman for Mank, and Stephen Young for Minari. I've seen a lot of people, quite a few people actually, saying, why wasn't he there? Well, for starters... Let me ask Alexa. Hey Alexa, how old is Anthony Hopkins? Anthony Hopkins is 83 years old. He was born on December 31st, 1937. The man's 83 years old. He probably lives in the UK. Over there, when this award would have been given out, it was 4 a.m., it would have been 4 a.m. Now, I don't know if he's shooting a film somewhere. I don't know if he's shooting in Australia, Romania, somewhere here, somewhere in London. But what I'm assuming is he's probably sleeping. It, it would have been 4 o'clock in the morning. He's 83 years old. Just leave him be. Just let him be. He won his Oscar. He will get his Oscar in the mail. And that that's that's awesome. Congratulations to Anthony Hopkins, and I'm sure I'm going to love his performance when I eventually see The Father in the next coming months, once it comes to Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, a lot of people say that Chadwick Boseman was uh, snubbed here. No, he wasn't snubbed. I, 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 was, I, I, I was pulling for him. I was legitimately pulling for Chadwick Boseman to win his posthumous Oscar. But that is besides the point. My main issue was that they just kind of threw it away and that's it. They kind of just said, the Academy accepts the award on Anthony's behalf. And then the show ended. And people were literally looking at each other like, oh, is that is that the end of the show? What's, what's going on here? This was the last award of the night. The winner couldn't be there. Why do that instead of you instead of doing your traditional best picture? Frances McDormand picked up best actress. Congratulations, great performance. I was personally pulling for Carrie Mulligan or Viola Davis, but Frances McDormand was a great, great uh, fern in Nomadland. And best director went to Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. We also had Thomas Vintenberg for another round, David Fincher for Mank, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari, and Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman. And Best Picture went to Nomadland. This was a no-brainer. We all knew that Nomadland was going to pick was going to pick up the win here. I was personally pulling for Promising Young Woman or Judas and the Black Messiah. I also thought that The Father and Minari all had a shot. Trial of the Chicago 7 and, and Manx chances went out the window. I don't think Sound of Metal had a real shot here. Just like Mank or Trial. I thought that the top five in this order had the best chance of winning. And this is just my opinion. Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Judas and the Black Messiah, The Father, and Minari. Now there is everything from the Oscars. There's just me talking about what I thought ab about the actual show, about the winners, and what I thought should have happened within the last 10 minutes, which was Best Actress, Best Actor, and then best picture to actually give it a bit more praise instead of oh here's here's best picture uh a lot of people had had, had a problem with the quest love game i don't think that was awful because we did get the momentous occasion and meme creation of glenn close twerking so that was a a, a sight to see shake it lady Okay, there you go, everybody. There is my video on the Oscars. Stay tuned, because tomorrow I will have my review of the brand new Hallmark film, Hearts Down and Under, as well as my ranking of the April films, and I will talk about the May films 
And then we will have a lot more reviews for Concrete Cowboy, Arlo the Alligator Boy. We also got a couple Netflix films coming your way. And a lot more very, very soon. So I will see all of you guys next time.